Okay, so welcome back grade 11s and 12s. Um, we're going to continue with stoichiometry. Last week we kind of really kind of focused on converting from grams to moles, and that was the big thing, was just kind of converting from grams, which is a weight, to really moles, which is the number of atoms. And that's really kind of what we focused on. Well, today we're going to go a little bit further. Okay, so last week this is kind of what we were looking at, and um, this is what we kind of focused on was this step right here. Okay, when well, we already ensured that the things are balanced, but then we had to convert from mass to moles. Okay, so we want to convert like from this 100 grams and saying, well, how many moles is it? Okay. Now, the next, or today's lesson and the next lesson is going to be the last ones. Well, determining the number of moles of each product and reactant after we know the number of moles of the quantity given, and then converting moles back to mass based on the atom's weight. Okay, so that's what we kind of want to focus on. Now, um, one of the things that I found in the past is really, really handy is to basically make this table. Whenever we have to do a stoichiometry question, um, if we make this table up, and usually the table's not given to you, it'll be given to you more in C's than U's, um, but you have to kind of create this table, and it makes the questions really, really easy. Okay? So this is kind of the table. You draw this out, and you put the balanced chemical equation across the top, okay? which I've highlighted. Now, again, it has to be balanced. It's key that it's balanced, and in this case, it is. Right? And most of these, I am going to give it to you balanced, especially if you're a C. A, a C. U's, you may have to balance it. Okay? Then you have a basically a row for mass, a row for molar mass, which we get from the periodic table, and then a row for moles. Okay? Now this is how we, once you have this table completely set up, it makes these questions really, really easy. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to fill out this table. Now we are going to go through all of these steps, but once we have the table, okay, I'm going to kind of go through it um, a slightly different way and make them a little bit more simple. Okay? So these are the steps. The first thing, we set up the table and fill in any information from the question. So here was the question. I want to make 100 gram bags of NH3. How many grams of hydrogen gas and how many grams of nitrogen gas do I need to order? So I basically want to know this. This is what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, I'm making 100 grams of this. I want to know how many grams of nitrogen and how many grams of hydrogen. That's the final thing I want to know. Okay. Well, in order to do this, I first set up a table and fill in any information that we know. I know the balanced chemical equation, okay? So I can put that in there, and I know that I need 100 grams, which I put in here. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is ensure the equation is balanced, okay? And it is, okay? I've checked, and the equation's balanced. Next is we're going to use the periodic table to determine the molar mass of each reactant and product. Okay, the number in front doesn't count, but the subscripts do. So I need to get the molar mass of NH3, N2, and H2. So we use our periodic table for this. So for NH3, it is going to be, um, again, nitrogen is 14.01. Hydrogens are each 1.01. .01, so if we add these all up, I get, let me do this in black. Oops, let me do this in black. I get... 17.04 grams per mole. Okay, we always want to include units because we're chemists. Okay, and then when I look at nitrogen, so N2, I have to pay attention to that little subscript there. So N2 is actually going to be 28.02 grams per mole. We'll round to two decimal spots. And then H2, now I don't include the number in front. Okay, it says it right in here. Okay, the number in front doesn't count, but the little subscript does. So H2, each is, H is 1.01, .01, so two of them is going to be 2.02 grams per mole. Okay, now I have those filled out. Now, in order to get moles, I know before we kind of went through the conversion method, but this table makes it a lot easier. In order to get moles, all I have to do is take 100 grams and divide it by whatever's underneath it. So 100 divided by 17.04. Now let me get my calculator up here. So if we take 100 and divide it by 17.04, we get 5.87 moles. 587 Moles. And all I did was take 100 divided by 17.04, and now I know my number of moles. Okay, it's a, it's a little bit easier than actually doing the conversions that we did before. So now I know my number of moles there. 
My next step, though, is I now have to figure out, well, how many moles of this do I have and how many moles of this do I have? Because moles are really the number of atoms. Okay, so how many nitrogens do I have and how many hydrogen atoms do I have? Okay. Now, in order to do this, this is, gets a little bit tricky. Okay, so we've already divided mass by moles to get my number of moles. We're already here. This is the step in order to get these two boxes. Okay. In order to get these two boxes, I have to multiply this number by basically a fraction, the coefficient of what I want over the coefficient of what I have. Okay. So if I want to get the number of moles here, I've got to take this number and I've got to multiply it by a fraction. And the fraction is the coefficient of what I want, right? and I want nitrogen right now, so I want this box right in here. So if I look up, there's no number in front of nitrogen, so that's a 1. Right? Over the coefficient of what I have, well, I have this value right here, because I'm the number is coming from NH3, so that's a 2. So I multiply this number by 1 over 2. Okay? And if I multiply that number by 1 over 2, 5.87, I get 2.9, 2.93, and again, this is moles. Now, I also want to be able to get all the way across and down over here, so how do I do that? Well, for this, in order to get to the nitrogen, I had to multiply by 1 over 2. But to get all the way across here, I'm going to have to multiply by 3 over 2. So if I take my 5.87 and multiply it by 3 over 2, I get 8 point eight one so now I have my moles of everything right now the last part is very very easy in order to get my mass when I went down the column I divided but to go back up I just have to multiply so if I take eight point eight one so eight point eight one and I multiply it by 2.02, .02, I get 17.79. So now I know that I need 17.79 grams of hydrogen. Okay? And now I'm going to do my number of nitrogen, so I'm going to take 2.93. And multiply it by 28. Point oh two, and I got eighty two point one zero. Okay. So now I know my amount of nitrogen, okay, and I'll highlight it for you. I know that nitrogen is eighty two point one zero grams, and hydrogen seventeen point seven nine grams. And if I combine these two together. I will get 100 grams of thing. And these should add up, or it should be very close. So 82 plus 17.79, I mean, if you add these close together, it comes out to 100 grams. And it should, okay, if we've done this question correctly. Okay. All right, so let's do another question, because um, I know that one got a little bit messy. Okay, so let's do another one from the beginning. So the stoichiometry question, I want to make 50 gram bags of calcium hydroxide. How many grams of hydrogen gas and nitrogen, and not nitrogen, how many grams of, how many grams of, they should say, calcium and hydroxide do I need to order? So basically, I want to know the number of grams here and here. Okay? And it's to make 50 grams of this. Okay. So first thing I set up my table, I've already got my table set up, so that part's done. Equation, make sure the equation's balanced. Let's check and make sure it's balanced. I got one calcium, one calcium, two hydroxides, two hydroxides, it's balanced. Use the periodic table to determine the molar mass. 
So I'm just going to use my molar mass from the periodic table. So calcium is 40.09, sorry, 40.08. Hydroxide is going to be one hydrogen and one oxygen. So if we have one hydrogen and one oxygen, that's going to be 17.01. And then calcium hydroxide. Okay, let's do a little bit of a calculation here. So calcium hydroxide, if I add these all together, I get 74.09. Okay, so just calcium hydroxide, remember you have the calcium that two means you have two oxygens and you have two hydrogens. So I've got to take calcium, which is going to be 40, plus two oxygens, so that's going to be 32, plus another two for the hydrogens. Okay, and I get a total of 74.09. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm going to divide the mass by the molar mass to get moles. So 50 divided by 74. 50 divided by 74. 0.09, 0 0.67 moles. So I've got 0 0.67 moles. Now if I want to know the number of moles here, I've got to multiply it by a fraction. Okay? And the fraction is going to be the coefficient of what I want, so 2, over the coefficient of what I have, over 1. Okay. So if I multiply 0.67 by 2, 1.34. Okay. Then if I want to get the number of moles down here, I'm going to take 0.67, but I have to multiply it by 1 over 1, okay. which means the number is going to be exactly the same, 0.67. Moles. Now I multiply these, I'm going to go back up and get grams, so if I'm going to go grams, I just start multiplying these two together. So 0 0.67 times 40.08 equals 26.85. And then my other one, 1.34 times 17.01, 22.79. Hey, and then it's always good to check to make sure that these would add up correctly to around 50 grams. And if you do, there's not going to be perfect because we did some rounding, but it does. So my final answer is I would need 26.85 grams of calcium, and I would need 22.79 grams of hydroxide in order to make 50 grams of calcium hydroxide. Okay, um, so I, I, this is going to be a little bit tricky, okay? Um, just make sure you spend some time um, going through my lecture and don't rush things and, uh, you know, email me if you have any questions.